Y'all ready to be history? It started. Welcome. Hi. 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 Hello, everyone. To the Pro Audio Suite. These guys are professional. They're motivated. Thanks to Tribooth, the best vocal booth for home or on the road voice recording. And Austrian Audio, making passion heard. Introducing Robert Marshall from Source Elements and Someone Audio Post, Chicago. Darren Robert Robertson from Voodoo Radio Imaging, Sydney. Tech to the VO Stars, George the Tech Whitam from LA. And me, Andrew Peters, voiceover talent and home studio guy. Line up, lady! Here we go. And welcome to another Pro Audio Suite. Thanks to Austrian Audio, making passion heard. Try Booth. Don't forget the code TRIPAP200. That will get you $200 off your purchase. And, of course, the Passport VO from Centrance and the Pro Audio Suite should be out by the end of the year. Still some available if you want to buy one. Just go to our website, theproaudiosuite.com. You know what? I forgot to tell you guys about my landing page, too. You know we have a landing oh. page at George the Tech? Oh, okay. Yes. Since we're doing that part of the show. Yeah. George the dot tech slash T-P-A-S. That's where the coupons and promotions live for yeah. anybody listening and watching, listening to the show. Right now it's 10% off on the website. So head that over to George the wow. dot tech slash T-P-A-S. Look at you, you sneaky bugger, hey? Lovely. Hey, hey. Now, funny you should talk about the uh, Passport VO because during the promotion when we were selling the Passport VO, we also ran a competition. And one of the winners from that competition had a demo made by Robbo with a little bit of help from me. And he's our guest today. G'day, Mama. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you very much for inviting me. Pleasure. It's a pleasure. Well, it's a bit of... Um, gratuitous self-promotion on our behalf, actually, because uh, <laughs> Robbo and I have decided that, well, Robbo is going to start producing demos, which he has been for a while, and uh, we're going to set up a little bit of a partnership if anyone's interested in having the two of us make their demo. Mm. And maybe after hearing this, they will. You never know. I'm, I'm sure they will, yes. And and I'm, I feel very lucky that I was the chosen one. So. <laughs> well, <You were. laughs> speaking of yeah. which, being the chosen one, how was your? What was your experience? It was great. I mean, I I've never done a demo like this. Most of my demos, well, actually, all of my demos are demo reels of things that I recorded in the past. Uh, I used to record a lot and and from different things, uh, crazy stuff, normal stuff. So it was very easy to to have a a demo reel. Uh, but I realized that demos now are different. So. Uh, this was my uh, first experience with uh, with the process, and it was uh, more elaborate than I than I ever thought. So we had a first session through Source Connect, and we talked about what I wanted, and uh, you heard very patiently. We uh, said some jokes, and uh, <laughs> everything was great. It, it was a wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> hour of, of fun and, and just ideas of what I wanted to accomplish. And as many people can hear, I have an accent because uh, I'm originally from Mexico. I moved to the States when I was uh, a grown up, uh, 30 years old. So I will always have an accent and I'm OK with that. And this was the first time that I embraced my accent. And I said, you know what? I need a demo that portrays my accent and portrays my voice as, as I speak like this. And uh, so you suggested to have uh, some scripts uh, that will showcase that. And, uh, and that's what you did. After the first talk that we had, then you, you sent me some scripts and, and they were very good. And they showcased precisely that by bilingual, um, way of, uh, of being just myself. And, and it was wonderful. Those were the first two parts. Yeah. It, it was a challenge because we had to think of something. There was no point getting you to read just straight scripts because, we had to think about, okay, what would you book with an, an accent? So we had to find, you know, the right kind of material that would actually highlight your accent, but also would make you bookable for that kind of work. So, uh, you know, hats off to Robbo, because Robbo whizzed off and put the scripts together and wrote them all and all that kind of stuff. And, of course, did all the donkey work when it came to putting the whole thing together. But there was one interesting part of it, and um, Robbo and I decided that we would get all the takes... And then we would actually edit up uh, what we thought were the go takes uh, from each of the scripts. 
and then but we didn't share them with each other so it it was quite enlightening when we actually did get to hear each other's mm. edits of your voices well the session itself i guess before that was was kind of interesting too because we all three of us sort of bounced ideas around in terms of the way directions we could go and you know things we liked and things we didn't like about certain reads and all that sort of stuff so even that was kind of interesting in itself just getting three different perspectives and and then going okay what's the best way yeah it was wonderful because i had two directors with two different point of views uh, so when i thought something should be like uh in a high note then uh, one of you will tell me no 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 let's start Uh, this slow and then you build up to wh where where you were so it was wonderful i mean uh, it, it's great i highly recommend it i mean have different people directing you because you will get different intentions and, and mm. different sounds from your voice yeah 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 it was, it was interesting for robo and i because we you know even though we've well we've known each other for god how long have we known each other 30 20, years 20, 20 30 years yeah something like that yeah It's 30, isn't it? Yeah, shit. it would be. That's 1995, scary. so it yeah. would be closer to 30. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Holy shit. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we are getting old. Um, <laughs> but it was like, because we're coming from different kind of areas where, you know, Robbo produces the spots and I voice the spots, so we're kind of seeing it from different angles. Mm. It was interesting how many we got the same, though, where we picked the same uh, takes, but there were, there were certainly differences in there as well. No, 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 that it was very interesting to, when I received both your versions. <laughs> some were very similar mm. and some were very different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I guess, uh, uh, you know, coming coming at directing that stuff from two different angles is um, is is probably the secret. And, and, and it's interesting, though, because I think, I think there's only... I think there's only one or two spots out of the five or six that we recorded that are actually uh, that that are actually all just you know the one the one edit from me or from Andrew and the rest are all hybrids. So um yeah, because there were what what there's seven there's seven spots seven spots. Was there it? were yeah. two that were 100 me and two that were 100 you and the other yeah, ones the other three were shared. Mm. Yeah. Should we play it? Um, yes, why not? Indeed, this is the edit of all the spots put together. And just a, a warning before you hear it, this opening music is near worm. You'll be doing this for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mimo, it's, uh, it's the world premiere. Well, it's the world premiere of the uh, the Andrew Peters and Robbo demo producing company. <laughs> <laughs> Two, I suppose. Good sell, good uh, sell. Good sell, I know. Can you tell I'm switched What's on? the name of the company, uh, by the way? Know. God knows. knows. God, we, yeah. can't, we yeah. can't agree on takes. Can you imagine trying to agree on the name of the company? <laughs> <laughs> This is for you. This is 55 minutes of slow grilled flavor. And this is always fresh and cut to order in this place. Colors ignite and blaze. Mighty creatures unleash their roars. Everybody yearns for something. Few have the drive to reach out and take it. Hey, hey how are you? I, perdón, ¿prefieres español? Or English, it doesn't matter, we're in Miami. Believe it or not, Makita has been making cordless power tools since 1978. 50 years later, there's no name more trusted for rugged, hardworking, long-lasting performance. It's like part of the family. Abuelo gave it to dad, and dad was going to give it to me, but I got a new one. A cup of chicken noodle soup, anything hot to warm you up and take away the hunger. A donation to Food Bank can make that happen. Make yours today. There you go. All right. I'll clap because no one is clapping. I will clap. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I thought was um, um, clearly a, conscien a conscious decision to cut around brands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, because I, I hear a lot of demos and I mean, people want to flaunt a brand. I think it makes them feel like the their demo somehow, I mean, I'm guessing that people will leave a brand name in thinking that we'll give some more weight or something to the demo, but you guys chose to keep it completely unbranded, which I thought was really interesting and, and I think a really smart choice. 
I think as a voiceover talent, it, it works in your favor not to have the brand because you might be mm-hmm. showing the demo to someone that's a competitor or yeah. that yeah. will be a conflict. So it, it's great. Smart. That's yeah, a big one. Absolutely. But the demo, we wanted the demo to be more about about memo too. We, we wanted it to, yeah. to sort of highlight, as we talked about with the original discussion we had, the three of us together, was that we wanted to accent his accent, I guess, more than anything. Right. So we wanted the whole thing to yeah. be about him. We didn't want it to be about people going, oh, he's done Chevy, oh, he's done this, he's done that. Yeah. We just wanted it to be, hey, this guy's really good and, you know, he's versatile um, yeah. and sort of hopefully put them in a place where they can hear a read and go, okay, well, that sits perfectly with this script I've got in front of me. Let's give him, let's give his agent a call. You definitely hear the, the styles and the range of, the, of, the, of your performance there. I mean, that, it's really, um, it's, it does. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. It highlights your voice quality, your voice style, and your acting. Yeah, thank you. That, that was a point. So thank you for mentioning that. But we didn't also want to build a demo where Memo would turn up to somewhere and then can't replicate the read. There's nothing worse than a, you know, a flash demo and then you realise pretty quickly that they must have spent hours and hours <laughs> yes, exactly. and hours getting the performance because this person can't actually do it anymore. Yes. Um, so this is all the stuff we knew Memo could do like that, you know. Yeah. So. And, that, and that's a good point. It was, you know, I do say two hours recording it, but we did seven scripts and we, and we did full scripts. What's, what Memo's walked away with is that edit, that 75-second edit, but each one of those pieces involved in there, we actually created a full, uh, a full spot. So, I mean, nothing's to time, um, but, you know, it's not right. a 30 or 45, but we, we recorded the full scripts. We put the whole, all of those scripts together. So Memo's also got those individual pieces that he can go away and stick up on YouTube or on his website or whatever he sees fit. And thank you for your patience because I, I to me, this was more than creating a demo. It was uh, like breaking a barrier because I, I had this mental block that because English is not my first language, I always had a respect and, and uh, that imposter syndrome <laughs> yeah. uh, that you get as an artist because you know that you're not <laughs> right for this. Uh, but but the way you guide me through the recording made the whole difference. So I, I actually was able to go past that and felt very comfortable recording in English, and I really needed that. So thank you very much for that. That's good. Pleasure. We had fun. What um, I think that the way that you cut it was really interesting, too, the way the spots uh, kind of flow together. Mm. Mm. Did that take a long time to figure out the sequencing and then where to actually place the cuts? So what we did, so the, so the end of the process, I guess, was once AP and I had done our individual cuts, we we just labelled them script 1A, script 2A, script 3A, and then 1B, 2B, 3B. So Mimo didn't know who had picked what or anything like that. It was completely blind for him. Um, and then I send my recommendations. Yeah. yeah he sent yeah. his recommendations and we cut together those recommendations. Then we jumped online and played through them again and made a few more changes. Uh, and then I, we, we did some Frankies as well. <laughs> we did. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yes. finally that's what sort of went into it. So then there was the final decision of, um, okay, this is, uh, this is the order we think we'll put them in. Did we decide on slices or did I, I think I picked those, didn't I? I think I picked those. You bits. did, yeah. So, and it was it was funny because you, you actually said, "Oh, you might find there's something I'm not happy with," you know. And I, all I'm going to say is in the beginning, see if you can mm. find it. And I listened to it, and I came back and I said, "I don't know what you're hearing because I can't hear anything that's standing out to me that sounds weird." And it turned out that it was just the first spot was longer than you actually wanted to the edit to be, but it made sense because Memo went from that soft up into more of a retail read on that first spot. So it it sort of led you into the next part, yeah. But in terms of picking the actual slices that I used, it was more about making sure that we showed off the best parts of that read. So it was sort of listening to the read and, and sort of going, it's all good, but what's the bits that really stand out in there? Uh, and they're the ones that get chopped together. Uh, like we, like Andrew just said, the, the, uh, the, the Polo Loco uh, chicken spot at the beginning, it, it, it bothered me that it was long 
um, but it also worked for me and I couldn't figure out why. And that's, you know, when Andrew sort of said to me, look, he goes from two tones. Um, he goes from that sort of light, happy thing into a bit more of a retail read. So it was sort of showing off two reads in the one spot, I guess. So, you know, it's all that sort of stuff. It's kind of figuring out what's going to work. And the nice thing about that Polo Loco thing too is it shows it shows Mimo's versatility that he can go from two, he can swap between styles within a read. Oh, yeah. It was a fun process. It really was. And, and collaborative every step of the way, which I think is important. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because once we were hearing them, I realized that, oh, maybe I was wrong with this one and you guide me to choose the best option. So that's why we have the Frankies and it, it was the best of everything. Mm. Yeah. I think you need to, I think you need to demystify a uh, colloquialism is what is a Frankies? <laughs> Frankenstein. <laughs> When you grab things from one spot or from one take and put it into another yes oh frankenstein yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. a frankenstein. Yeah, frankenstein oh yes yes absolutely yeah. yeah yeah makes sense you had a lot of takes because when i record sometimes they will tell me oh just do the tag or just do this part but i like to do the whole script because i don't know it, it has a flow it flows different than just doing one part so you were very patient in letting me do it from the top all the way <laughs> to the end of the script so you had tons of takes so so i guess it was not easy to to select That's the other thing there too, though, is, I mean, by doing a whole script, all of a sudden we have, you know, five or six different options in terms of bits we can take from that script rather than doing just a couple of lines and going, well, we're stuck with that. Because, you know, there was a couple of ones where when I was writing scripts, I thought, oh, you know, the final edit, that's probably the, the line or two that I'll use. And then you've nailed it somewhere else. And it's like, well... <laughs> There's no doubt about it. That's the bit to use. So, um, well, it was interesting with some of them because I, I you know, I'm thinking, oh, this could be really soft and intimate and whatever. And Robbo, I remember saying, can you just, you know, up the projection a bit on this spot? And it was the one for Food Bank, I think. Oh, yeah. 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 And uh, it was like, oh, I thought, no, that's not going to work. And it did work. Mm -hmm. so. I do know what I'm talking about sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you record on? Since obviously you're, record, you're working remotely, tell us about your um, studio um, at your end first, Memo. I have a Source Connect Pro, uh, and uh, I use that, and I'm in a 4x4 four four, uh, whisper room that George knows because he came here and it sounded not up to what it could have sounded. So he recommended uh, for me to put some bass traps and that made the whole difference. And I've been recording with these bass traps uh, everything. So that's that's what I recorded from in Miami. And then your signal chain, your microphone and what you connect your mic to. Oh, yes. I have a 416. Uh, I also have a U87, but for this uh, whisper room, the 416 sounds better than the U87. And then this goes to an Apollo solo. And from there, I go into a, a Mac, M1 Mac, and I record to Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. And I'm one of the lucky ones that has a perpetual, so... I took the option like a year ago that they let you upgrade. Good on yeah. you. Yeah, well done. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Put that thing on ice. Don't upgrade anything. Yeah. Yes, I know. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Stay right where you are. Yeah, exactly. So you, and I do, I was like, I think I remember you had a U87. Well, I don't know why I remember that, but... Um, Oh, yeah. I was so lucky because a studio closed and, and they were selling it in eBay. Uh, and I, I called the guy and said, why don't you sell it to me? And he said, well, if you give me $2,000, uh, I'll give it to you. And of course, yeah. <laughs> I gave yeah. him $2,000 bucks and, and I have a U87. Yeah. I, I wanted to say, like, because the U87 can be challenging in small spaces, that there's a couple things to experiment with. And, you know, you'd be amazed at how many things you can do to change the way the mic sounds. But a big one uh -huh. is, um, uh, first of all, just literally changing the placement of the mic in the space, right? Obviously, you're not going to make it much lower or much higher because, you know, you're, you are the height you are. But um, moving it in that plane, so whatever the, whatever the height of the mic is, whatever, if let's say it's uh, eight, five feet, seven inches off the floor or something or whatever, And then moving the microphone forward, back, left, and right, three to six inches, and hearing how it changes. 
can be quite an interesting experiment because you'll definitely notice differences in the way the mic sounds or hears you, really. And that's, that's one interesting experiment. And then another one is playing with the figure eight pattern, which you'll find the mic sounds like a totally different mic. It's like a different instrument. So now it's like, you're like, well, I didn't even think of that. And now the microphone has this unique sound that's even more unique from the 41.6. <laughs> you know, it becomes even more uh, smooth and warm and, and less bright and crisp. So yeah, it's not going to be good for a lot of things, but it's quite a unique sound. So it's just it's worth experimenting with it because uh, the the figure eight pattern will help it tune out some of the what are called room nodes. It's where the room basically builds up certain frequencies due to its physical size and shape. You know, its dimensions. So you know that's an, an interesting experiment because that once it's in figure eight. Um, the microphone becomes essentially deaf or doesn't hear anything on its sides and its top and its bottom. So that, that that's a fun experiment to try as well. Well, George, then I need you to come to Miami and <laughs> help me out with that experiment. Wasn't even yeah. planning that, but that's uh, something fun for us to experiment with. Yeah, when I uh, next I make it down to South Florida, which I'm well way overdue for doing that. How, how do you look? In a, how do you look in a white suit? <laughs> I, it's about time I find out. That's about all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> well, summer's almost over. You know? Yeah. Uh -huh. I actually did use figure eight with um, the OC early in the day, in, uh, when we first got the OC. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And I thought it sounded great. And then it wasn't until I turned it off and then <laughs> laid it up next to just straight cardioid and went, yeah, that's a bit woofy. So I'd, right, right. So, yeah. yeah, when you go to figure eight, the mic has a larger or a deeper um proximity effect so yeah. you actually probably find yourself working the mic farther from away to compensate yes so, you do yeah, yeah so that's an interesting side effect because then if you want to not feel like you're so if you want to get the mic away from you like physically if you farther from the mic it's a good way to do that and still get that immediate focused sound mm. So, but I did find that the U87 in figure eight definitely has a different tone, right? Whereas the Whoa. OC818 was a bit more linear or a bit more consistent from pattern to pattern for various reasons, other than being a very modern mic with a lot more electronics, probably they could do that. Um, where the figure, whereas the U87, I've had clients where I say, let's try that figure eight pattern. And I like the way it sounds, but they don't because it sounds too different to them. So yeah. it's just, it sounds it weird in the me. headphones. Yeah. Sounds weird in the headphones. That's yeah. definitely going to be run reason. Yeah. It just, it's not as crisp. It's not as, you know, articulate. It might yeah. be a little bit woofy, as you said. Yeah. So it's an yeah. interesting experiment. So and, and with placement of the microphone, just out of interest, if you're in a whisper room like Memo is with a four by four, now the ceiling height's probably only about, what, six foot six or something, I guess, floor to ceiling inside. Yeah. I'm guessing. Maybe a little higher. Um, mm -hmm. So would it be better f as far as trying to get rid of all those artifacts of various things happening inside that whisper room to do your voices sitting down so you can move the mic lower and yeah. more centered in the room? Yeah, I, 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 one of my clients, Reno Romano, I've known for years, he's a promo voice here. That was his trick that he told me about quite a long time ago. And... Um, I've been recommending it. I mean, I know that some people, that's just not going to work for them. They really need to stand. But if you just can lower the mic six inches even by yeah. sitting on Whoa. a tall stool or leaning on a stool or whatever, um, that even can be enough to make a, a considerable difference. So, yeah, the smaller the space you're in, the smaller that chamber is. If you think about it, the smaller the chamber, the, the, more, a, the more an adjustment will matter. Yeah. Right? The more you move a mic one way or the other, the more it's going to make a difference because the space is smaller. The math, everything's tighter. The dimensions are smaller. Everything matters more. And as you go to a much larger room with a much higher ceiling, everything matters a bit less in terms of like how close and all, how far you are and stuff. So, yeah, it's, just, it's the little things and, and those subtle adjustments make a pretty big difference. So the ideal spot if you're in a... a a whisper room or a booth, that kind of size, the ideal spot or any smaller room is to have the microphone exactly in the middle. So floor to ceiling, wall to wall, all that kind of thing. 
it, you know what? That makes sense because you're farthest from any one surface, which is really what you want to do, right? There's pressure zones. They're called pressure zones. And every wall and surface will have a pressure zone. But it's not that simple either because there are harmonics, first, second, et cetera. And those are far more plentiful and in more places. <laughs> so it's very yeah. complicated. The inside of a, of a space and, and the pressure zones at different locations build up. So it's uh, if you ever want to see what they actually look at, just literally type into Google room mode calculator. You'll get this website called Amrock, and it will create this really interesting 3D image of what your booth would sound like or look like in terms of sound in different f frequencies. And, uh, and not only that, it provides a tone generator so you can mouse over where these different frequency resonances are and hear what those frequencies would sound like. It's really fascinating. And I use it wow. all the time when I'm trying to help people tune rooms. It's funny, you know, I think most, most people just fluke it. If it sounds good, they've, they've literally fluked it. Oh, I mean, I've been doing it that way all my whole career <laughs> yeah. you know I'm, just, I'm like i'm like i want to just have more ways to uh have something that is of of actual usefulness and less random you know when people hand me to hire me to tune their booth i hate i you know, i i have that kind of almost imposter syndrome problem where i think well i don't have all the math and the science behind this it's just experience right and uh, so I have that feeling too occasionally like um, they're paying me to do this and I'm just saying do this because I think it works. But, you know? but that's like anything though. I mean, <laughs> that's, exactly. that's, you, you've summed up, summed up me perfectly here. Uh, um, you know, it's like I've never been to, to, to any type of school to learn my craft. I started in right. radio and I was lucky enough to work with um, a guy called Jeff Thomas who, who creatively – well, he, he, his last job was working for Howard Stern. So if that says anything, mm -hmm. you know, that's how good he was. And then I went yeah. to a place, an advertising agency, and I landed with this guy called Steve Hessel. And technically he was brilliant. So, you know, I learned stuff from him. But, yeah, you, you sit in the room by yourself and you go, you know, I, even producing the, the Mimo's de Memo's demo, you know, it's my scripts, uh -huh. it's my recording, it's my production, and you, and you play it and you go, what are they going to say? <laughs> uh -huh. You know, it's like, they like it. it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's 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 a it's a nervous wait. It's like going on stage. Yeah. You know, it's like you you yeah. just put yourself out there constantly and keep your fingers crossed that what you've done is everyone's going to go, wow, that's good, and not holy crap, are you serious? Yeah, mm. it's funny, isn't it? There were one of the best things I ever heard, um, which I refer to a lot, came from a guy who's based in Sydney. His name is Dave Gibson, and he's kind of a comedy sidekick when it comes to like breakfast shows and stuff on radio but he you know he's also a stand-up comic and he does a lot of sort of character acting kind of stuff as well with his voice i was at a session it, well he was doing the session i just happened to be in the control room and he was doing it and it was him um in a crowd so he's trying to shout over the top of a crowd that was the the script that's what the brief was and his question to the engineer was whereabouts in the crowd am i yeah, that's and they're cool. like looking at me going, what, what, what do you mean? What do you, what do you mean? And he goes, well, there's a big difference. It, am I in the front of the crowd, the middle of the crowd, back of the crowd? Where am I? Yeah. And, you know, it's like that is really Great. smart. Creative people, they always find a way. Yeah. They do, don't they? They do. Mm. So when are you coming to Miami, George? When am I coming to Miami? <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I'm on... Uh I'm on hover.com or not, not hover. What's it called? What's the website for that I always use? Kayak. I'm on kayak right now. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for flights. No, yeah. Ho hopefully, uh, hopefully this fall for sure. I, I have a lot of East Coast and Mid Coast <laughs> stuff to do. Dallas in a couple of weeks and, uh, and uh, heading, heading to Atlanta, South Carolina. So it sounds like an East Coast tour is brewing. Look out for George the Tech Ooh. on tour. Coming to a stadium near you yeah. soon. Yeah. <laughs> Can I make the promo? <laughs> oh man! Oh yeah, that'd be great. George that'd the Tech awesome. rocks the house. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you just volunteered for another job, Robbo. Well done. I'll do you a promo, George. No worries. <laughs> Thanks, man. Not a problem at all. Yeah, I need it bad. <laughs> stick it up on Facebook. Look out, world! Here comes George. Yeah, I'll do it in Spanish. Espanol. Yeah, there you go. Please. You got someone to do your Spanish version Jorge, for you? Jorge, Tecnico. <laughs> yeah. No, we very much want to have multilingual uh, content on the site. It's absolutely part of our five-year plan. Um, 
have all of our content dubbed by human actors, <laughs> not AI, you know, and uh, that's a, that's a, that's definitely a goal, you know? So Mimo's got a new demo, mate. Maybe you should take a listen and see if he'll suit what you yeah. need. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh boy. I know that would that'd be amazing to hear for sure. For sure. Yeah. How, how much do you work a memo in, um, in, in Spanish versus English in Miami? In Oh no, that's uh, most, yeah. My bread and butter is in mm-hmm. Spanish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I know that the uh, Spanglish is a big thing, right? Not, I, I haven't done that much. I mean, I once in a while I'll get one, but not as many as I want to. And as you would ex- expect, you think it's yeah. more people with an American accent doing Spanglish or whatever, or is it not? I I, I think it could be, and also uh, sometimes what I do is doing in. I do both the Spanish and then the English. So that is mostly yeah. what I do. But but Spanglish, yeah, it's very yeah, rare. Gotcha. I think I've done one or two. Yeah, huh? and that was part of the, the the brief when we talked about your demo originally, wasn't it? Was that you know there there wasn't a lot of that work out there, but you know we wanted to do a demo that showed you doing that so that yeah. is where we went and and i think it's it's going to start happening more often mm-hmm. and and when i heard a commercial where where the the dad was speaking in english but then they switched to spanish i mean it was very powerful for the sp- Spanish speaking people so it it make you makes you feel something so i'm sure there will be more like those in yeah, the future yeah. and now i have a demo yeah. beautiful just quickly, coming from a country where there's only one language, I mean, obviously there's a multicultural community, but you know, there's no there's no voiceover work for Chinese accents or Vietnam accents or anything like that. Is is it hmm. is it a niche thing over there? Like getting into in getting into it originally, was it difficult or was it just finding the right people who were doing the right type of work or I was very lucky to land in Miami at a time where they were looking for new options uh, for voiceovers. Uh, there was a very big Cuban uh, community here, but uh, suddenly uh, Argentinians were coming, Mexicans were coming, and they wanted a different sound. So I was here at the right time, and, and I started working because they wanted not the Cuban sound, but, but a more... A uh, neutral sound. Uh, I, I know when we say neutral is not really neutral, but they wanted that difference uh, from the Cuban uh, sound that they had in Miami, and uh, and here there was a lot of work here, and of course you have LA, but I think Miami for Spanish speaking uh, work, this this was a place to be. So it, it was just pure luck that I was here, and then of course you. Uh, send your demos to production companies, to studios. Of course, I sent mine to all the studios here in Miami. And then I started working with different production companies and ad agencies. And what I did was the people that I worked with, I would save their names and then uh, I will send something at the end of the year to all the people in that company, not only the people that I worked with, and I started creating my my list. And I've been doing that for more than uh, 20 years, sending a little something to remind the client that, that I'm still here. Uh, so yeah, it's a process and you have to be patient and, and just uh, be grateful to the people that you work with and be professional. Mm. That's the most important thing. Mm. Because in Mexico, for some strange reason, people like to play during their recordings and do funny voices and uh, waste everyone's time. So, for example, there was a guy that used to say, Sipirili. instead of saying C, si, he would say, Sipirili. and and to him, it was funny because in Mexico, they, they do that. But here in Miami, when he said it the first time, Everyone was shocked. And then the second time he said it, the producer asked him, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, what are you saying? And he went, Sipirili. Oh, it's because I, instead of saying C, si, I say Sipirili. Everyone just stayed silent for a moment. And, and the producer just went, oh, okay, let's continue. So <laughs> you cannot do things that you do in your country before you understand how, how it works here. Time yeah, is sure. money. And... Uh, you have to be professional and ethical and uh, 
and and that's it once once you know how things work then just do that be yeah. respectful professional ethic and that's it yeah 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 fair enough same the world over indeed it is really isn't yeah. it that's yeah. right <laughs> especially in this day and age <laughs> totally well i think we pretty well covered that off thank you memo for joining us on this uh, journey of the demo the memo demo, in fact. My pleasure. The memo demo. <laughs> there you go. And if you'd like to get your own demo done with AP and I, the best place to go is the Pro Audio Suite website, which is the Pro Audio Suite.com. Yep. Uh, and if you want to be even more specific, you can go to the Pro Audio Suite.com forward slash demos. Or, uh, or drop us an email. Yes, indeed. Just go to the website and drop us an email and we can yeah. talk to you from there as well. And uh, if you want to find out more about Figure 8, George the Tech is your man. Head to uh, – <laughs> what's, your, what's your website, George? Is it just George the dot tech or something? I can't remember. Yeah, that's it. Yep, there that's you go. Right. So uh, On the first few pages on Google. You type any variation of it, you'll find it. As an audio engineer, I highly recommend you investigating the figure eight because it's a great sound. Yeah, it is. Well, that was fun. Is it over? The Pro Audio Suite. With thanks to Tribo. And Austrian Audio. Recorded using Source Connect. Edited by Andrew Peters. And mixed by Voodoo Radio Imaging. With tech support from George the Tech Whittem. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and join in the conversation on our Facebook group. To leave a comment, suggest a topic, or just say g'day, drop us a note at our website. TheProAudioSuite.com.